Lord of Mysteries, Chapter 1413 in Modern Day 11. Nam Da really has a sense of humor. It's a good thing that my broadband company doesn't charge based on data usage. I control the twitch in the corner of my lips and turn to look out the window. She's here again. A female ghost watching a Chinese ghost story. It feels weird, since she doesn't show any malice and had pointed out the problem of the cult. While I lack the ability to fend off ghosts, assassins aren't capable of doing such things. I ask after some consideration. Do you want to continue watching? I watched this movie a long time ago. There's no need for me to rewatch it. Besides, I still have to go to the airport to pick up the VIP tomorrow. I can't stay up all night. If I'm late or something goes wrong, I'll definitely have my salary deducted or maybe even get fired. Thankfully, I haven't taken any housing loans or bought things on credit. I don't have any credit card payments and promissory notes to pay. Otherwise, I would have rejected Madame Da just now and looked for someone cheaper. The female ghost on the glass window turns her head and looks at me. Will it affect your sleep? Just wear headphones. Don't worry about the light, I answer frankly. The female ghost nods and suddenly disappears from the window. Then, her figure appears on the screen, almost merging with the movie scene. At the same time, the sound of the computer speaker mutes and the light on the screen dims. Impressive, as expected of a female ghost. I don't know why, but I feel that my fear of ghosts is decreasing. Thinking back to when I was young, I was often scared out of my wits by horror movies, yet I couldn't help but secretly watch them, feeling both pain and happiness. I get up, switch off the light in the room, climb into bed, pull the duvet over me, and drape it over my chest. I close my eyes as I prepare to sleep. Vaguely, I feel like I've forgotten something. A minute later, I snap awake. I open my mouth and say, good night. As a successor of socialism, I have to be polite even when facing female ghosts. A few seconds later, an ethereal voice reverberates in my ears. Good night. With this done, I begin to sleep with ease. Not long after, I fall into a deep sleep. When I wake up, I realize that the sky is already bright. Sunlight passes through the curtains, scattering across my bed. Out of habit, I laze in bed for a few minutes, and slowly I become conscious. I sit up slowly, turning my head instinctively. I see that the monitor screen has been switched off. However, the computer hasn't switched off. It's still blinking red. Did she leave after she was done watching? I gradually recover my memories from last night, like I've experienced a clear dream. Shaking my head, I pick up my cell phone to check the time. FCK. I scramble up and dash to the bathroom. I'm almost late. If I were to mess things up, CEO Huang will skin me alive. He only treats pretty girls kindly. At that moment, there's no assassin, cult, female ghost, or medium to interfere with my thoughts. For humans, living takes the utmost priority. And the most important thing needed to live is to have money. After five minutes, I finish washing up and changing my clothes. I rush downstairs. Here, I have to thank my two roommates. They always sleep late and wake up late. They don't clash with the time when I need to use the bathroom. They don't delay my getting to work. Peng Deng had said before that the person he rented an apartment with in another city would always take our long baths in the morning, making him either have to wake up early or bring his toothbrush and towel to the office. I suddenly feel regret when I reach the staircase. I'm an assassin. I could have jumped from the sixth floor. This could have saved me plenty of time. However, there must be a lot of pedestrians outside at this point. If I dare go up the windowsill, they would probably call the cops. That would only waste more time. Without another thought, I jump down the more than 10 steps at a time, allowing me to quickly reach the ground floor. During this process, I even had the time to unlock my phone and hire a car to send me to the airport. I can make a claim for transportation expenses since it's for business. My luck isn't bad. Very soon, someone takes my request. Furthermore, he's nearby. After I rush out of the compound, a white peer-to-peer -peer ride-sharing car stops in front of me in less than a minute. Perfect. As I heave a sigh of relief, I pull the door open and climb in. Airport. Okay. The driver is wearing a mask and has no habit of striking up a conversation. This is what I like. Just like I like having a mute for my haircuts. I glance at my phone again. After confirming that I still have time even if I encounter a traffic jam, I call the chauffeur and confirm that he's on his way to the airport. This driver isn't part of our company. He's from the local office branch that the foreign VIP is part of. In other words, there's no need for me to pick up Mr. Zaratulstra as his own employee will be responsible for it. However, CEO Wang still sent me to receive him to show his sincerity. After making sure that everything is fine, I start using my phone. In the process, I see a joke post. Why is the person I'm seeing suddenly ignoring me? She insisted on going to my house to watch a movie yesterday. 
I still had to wake up early for work, so I got her to sit by the bed and watch it alone. Okay. I mock this guy and check the replies. About an hour later, the car arrives at the airport. Thankfully, I'm still early. I breathe a sigh of relief and give the driver a 5-star rating. Then, I open the flight schedule and confirm the arrival time. NH-6567 landed at the alternate airport, Ningbei Airport, due to an engine malfunction. Holy SHT, is this for real? I quickly call the other party's chauffeur. Hey, there's a problem with the flight. It was redirected to Ningbei. I'll immediately give Mr. Zaratulstra a call and confirm if he will immediately make a domestic transfer, or if he will come by high-speed rail, or whether we should wait for tomorrow, the chauffeur says rather calmly. Okay, where are you? I'll come and meet you first. I'm having a headache just thinking that I might have to wait at the airport for a few more hours. After asking for the location of the car park, I walk all the way there and find the chauffeur. This driver is a foreigner with black hair and blue eyes. He had a mustache that isn't too thick, and he looks rather handsome. Hello, how do I address you? I ask as I approach. Previously, old AI only gave me a number and a Chinese name. Now, I would like to call him by his actual name. The driver nods and says, Mr. Zaratulstra has already bought a ticket that will fly off in an hour. He will be here very soon. Please inform CEO Huang about the developments. Okay, I stifle my inner groan. This means that I might have to stay at the airport until noon. The chauffeur continues, My name is Risego. I'm a staff member from the Mr. Company. Your Chinese is very good. Which country are you from? I casually compliment as I comfort myself. France, Risego smiles and replies. Chapter 1414 in Modern Day 12 France is great. I had plans of politely complimenting his country. But perhaps because I'm used to lampooning, I almost blurt out, Great at surrendering. Cough, I cough dryly and say no more, lest he finds Chinese-styled sense of humor unacceptable. After chatting for a while, I point in the direction of the airport. Mr. Zaratulstra will take a few more hours before he arrives. Shall we head inside and have something to drink? Wine? Rasego looks at me. No, I mean coffee, tea, cola, and so on. Don't drink and drive. I'm surprised that his first reaction towards the suggestion is wine. You're a professional chauffeur. Aren't you a little too rash? A foreigner, Rasego, clearly didn't understand my humor. After thinking for a few seconds, he says, Sorry, I woke up too early today and I'm still a little sleepy. I'll be sleeping in the car for a while. Okay, I secretly breathe a sigh of relief. Although I'm not against social interactions, and I'm even willing to be on good terms with people from a partnered company, I still feel a little uncomfortable thinking about having to spend a few hours with a stranger I'm not familiar with. Even if the other party were a beauty, this feeling wouldn't be any less. Yes, that's the case for me. Perhaps he shares the same thoughts. That's probably why he chose to sleep in the car. Returning from the parking lot to the airport, I randomly find an empty seat and sit down, not putting what I said about drinking something into practice. It all costs money. Based on my understanding of CEO Huang, he's quite generous. But at the same time, as the big boss, he wouldn't pay attention to the reimbursements of a mere employee. These sorts of trivial matters are usually handled by the finance department that follows a particular procedure. Therefore, if I waited until noon at the airport, I would definitely be able to claim the expenses for lunch, but I would have to bear the expenses for coffee, cola, tea, snacks, etc. Those are unnecessary expenses. Of course, if I could get Comrade Rasego to join me for the meal, then I would be able to claim such expenses, client entertainment. For this reason, when I invited him earlier, I was actually quite sincere. At least half of it was true. After sitting for a while and using my phone, I suddenly realized a serious issue. I hadn't had breakfast yet. I had left in a hurry this morning. As I listen to the rumbling of my stomach and feel my thirst and hunger, I decide to find something to eat. Food at the airport is expensive. Shall I look for KFC or McDonald's, or get some random slice of bread? I stand up and head to the side of the lobby. When I see the first shop that looks like it sells local delights, I turn in and look for food that's cost-efficient. My phone buzzes as I approach the frozen food section. Hello, Mr. Rasego. What's the matter? I glance at the caller ID. Rasego's voice comes from the other end of the line. Ning Bay is undergoing a thunderstorm. All flights are cancelled. Mr. Zaratulstra will switch to using the high-speed railway. Isn't this fellow too unlucky? I'm amused yet helpless. Then shall we wait at the railway station? There's definitely more than enough time because the high-speed railway station is just below the airport. Even if Mr. Zaratul couldn't buy a ticket to stop at this station, it would take a maximum of 90 minutes from the airport to the municipal high-speed railway station. It takes less time than the time it takes from Ningbei to this city. 
Wait a little longer. I'll wait for confirmation, Risego replies calmly. As we speak, I see the door to the ice cabinet push open. A small, fair, fat hand reaches in and picks up a bakesy branded white peach oolong flavored ice cream. I trace this hand and see a child that looks around one year old. I have no clue regarding its gender. Sitting in a pram, its face is chubby and it cannot stop chirping. It's really adorable. Such a young child eating ice cream. The parents are so irresponsible. I gaze up at the adult pushing the pram and find a gentle, beautiful woman. I have no intention of stopping them. It's none of my business. As long as they don't abuse the child, all I'll do is lampoon. However, is letting a one-year-old eat ice cream a form of abuse? Anyways, the child appears quite happy. After hanging up the phone, I consider the possibility that we have to rush over to the high-speed railway station at any time. I simply make a choice, getting some packaged pastries and bottled water before paying for it at the cashier. Just as I find a place to sit down and quickly finish breakfast, Risego calls again. The tickets for today's high-speed railway have been sold out. Mr. Zaratulstra will have to stay there and come tomorrow. He sure is filled with bad luck. That's good too. I can head back directly. I don't have to wait until noon or head to the railway station. I tersely acknowledge. Then let's head back first. Yes, we'll come again tomorrow, Risego says immediately. Come to the parking lot. I'll send you back. I'm returning to the city anyway. Uh, sure, I reply with a smile. It's not that I'm saving money and being greedy. After all, I can also claim my travel expenses for my trip back. However, there's nothing wrong with having good relations with the employees of a partnered company at work. Even if I don't end up getting an additional order, it gives me another outlet for job hopping in the future. The only problem is how I'll get along with him later. It can be quite awkward if two unfamiliar people were to get together. Let's just talk about work. It's only about an hour anyway. I console myself. I leave the airport and find Rosego and his Mercedes. I get into the car and buckle my seatbelt. Before I can say anything, Rosego turns his head to give me a glance. Sit tight, huh? I feel lost for a moment. The next second, the car starts and speeds off. Hey, 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 hey. This is still a parking lot. You're driving too fast. Ah. Uh, after a series of bends, the car slows down and exits the parking lot through the gantry. Then, the Mercedes continues to race. It swerves left and right on the road, taking up any empty spots. Not only is he on the verge of exceeding the speed limit, but he also shows no signs of stopping. On several occasions, I imagine that there would be a car accident. But with Rosego's control, the car nimbly avoids danger. This, aren't you driving too fast? I ask, coming back to my senses and gulping. Don't worry. I used to be a racer, Rosego says as he looks ahead, his eyes bright. But isn't it too fast? This is a city road, not a race track. I lampoon nervously. I don't dare to say another word, afraid that Master Rosego would be distracted and might end up hitting a guardrail or harming the innocent. At this moment, I recall my ability as an assassin. I decide that if anything were to go wrong, I would jump out of the car to seek refuge or forcefully control Rosego to stop the vehicle. Forty minutes later, the racing car stops outside the building where my company is located. Thank you. Thank you. My face is a little pale as I unbuckle the seat belt. If it weren't for my abilities as an assassin and my outstanding balance, I definitely would have gotten carsick and puked all over the ground. You're welcome. See you tomorrow. Rosego waves with a smile. I exhale and bid the racer farewell. Entering the building, I glance subconsciously at the spot where the vending machine had appeared. It's empty. Fortunately, I head upstairs and press the up button. As I wait, I lower my head and straighten my clothes. Suddenly, a pair of long legs wearing leather boots walk over. Chapter 1415 and Modern Day 13. I raise my head subconsciously and glance to the side. This instantly makes me feel a little uncomfortable. This isn't because the other party is a gorgeous beauty, but because she's CEO Huang's daughter. Miss Bernie Huang. This lady's eyebrows are straight, her nose high, and she wears a pair of blue tint colored contacts. Together with her slightly curled hair that she dyed a chestnut color, she has a level of beauty belonging to foreigners. Seeing her look at me, I instinctively open my mouth to greet her. Miss Wong. No, that might bring about negative connotations. My lady, Miss Wong. It's too exaggerated, just like a brainless idol drama. Madam Huang, this clearly doesn't suit a young girl. She'll get angry. Teacher Huang, she's still a student. As my thoughts run through my mind, the young lady, Miss Bernie Huang, nods at me. Hello, hello, I respond reflexively, using an honorific greeting. Is my dad in the office? Miss Huang asks softly. Oh, sorry, I don't know. I just came back from some work outside. 
I haven't stepped into the office yet, I answer honestly. Miss Huang nods slightly and doesn't say anything else because the lift we're waiting for has already reached the first floor. As the lift moves up, I try my best to find a topic to prevent the situation from being awkward, but I don't dare to strike up a random conversation. CEO Huang treasures his daughter very much. If I were to offend her by saying something wrong, I might be fired today. Ju. At this moment, Miss Huang turns to look at me and says hesitantly, as if she's trying to recall my name. Ju Mingrui. I hurriedly say my name. Although Miss Huang often comes to the office to help her mother check on her father, I believe that she definitely doesn't know a mere employee like me. To be able to have a slight impression of my surname means that her memory is beyond imagination. Mr. Zhu, I have something I need your help on. Miss Huang asks politely. No problem. As long as I can do it. I reply without hesitation. As long as Miss Huang is satisfied, a promotion and a pay raise would not be too far away. As we speak, we exit the elevator and enter the company. Help me translate a batch of documents for me. Bernie Huang walks in her leather boots as she says. Translate. What language is it? I ask hurriedly. Cursive script. Miss Huang replies simply. Cursive script. I haven't learned that before. Just as I'm about to answer, Miss Huang suddenly picks up her pace. We have already arrived outside CEO Huang's office. This lady doesn't give CEO Huang any face at all. She walks past the female secretary that is stationed outside, nimbly reaching out her hand and pushing open the door gently. Let's hope that CEO Huang isn't spreading his love early in the morning. I silently pray in my heart before taking an indiscernible step to the side in case I get embroiled in CEO Huang's family matters. Of course, I'm not that nervous either. After all, CEO Huang is experienced. If he were to do any sordid deeds in the office, he would definitely lock the door from the inside. As expected, there's no one in the office. CEO Huang is at a meeting. The female secretary stands up nervously and tells Miss Huang, I'll wait for him inside. Miss Huang nods and walks into the room. One step later, she turns her head and says, Mr. Zhu, please come in. All right. I walk over and quickly say, I don't have much knowledge about cursive script. Take a look first. Miss Huang stops by the door and says, When I enter, she casually closes the door. Then, she flips her sling bag and takes out a stack of paper. Try and see if you can read it. If possible, read it to me. Okay. I take the stack of papers from her. My whole body turns stiff from that cursory look. If I'm not wrong, the cursive script on the paper is from CEO Huang. I've seen the comments he had written on documents on several occasions. Th, this is CEO Huang's diary. Damn, don't tell me he writes down every affair. Which decent person writes a diary? I can't help but sweat. If I read it, I offend CEO Huang. If I don't read it, I offend Miss Huang. What does it mean to be in a dilemma? This is what it means to be in a dilemma. Wait, I don't know cursive script. Haha, I can't read it. Although I can barely make out what CEO Huang has written, I really don't know any cursive script. I immediately open my mouth. And Miss Huang, I can't. Before I finish, the office door is pushed open. Thud. CEO Huang rushes in and he scans the both of us with his widened eyes. He retracts his gaze from the gap between me and Miss Huang. And he smiles. Bebe, why didn't you give me a call? I could have gone down to bring you up. I'm already of age. Miss Huang glances at me from the corner of her eye. I'm just making a request to Mr. Zhu for his help. I immediately understand her intention. Secretly, I pull the documents behind my back. Call him Uncle Zhu. CEO Huang smiles as he emphasizes. Then, he turns his head to look at me. You may leave. I'll holler if there's anything. Okay. I use this opportunity to leave the office and return to my seat, where I hide the papers. Before I can switch on the computer, Razan leans in and says with a suppressed voice, You're finished. Uh, I stare blankly. Don't you know that CEO Huang dotes on his daughter to the point of having an obsession? He hates seeing other men get close to his daughter the most. During Miss Huang's past few visits, the men who took the initiative to offer their help have either quit or transferred to a branch company at a tier 3 city, Razen said with a chuckle. It can't be. I was just in proximity to her. I mainly did so because I wanted to please CEO Huang. I grit my teeth from hearing that. Tisk, don't you know what kind of man CEO Huang is? In his eyes, all men are the same as him. If one has money, they'll definitely be playing around, loving everyone they see, no, making love to everyone they see. If one doesn't have money, then they'll seduce the rich and beautiful lady, take up the post of CEO, and elevate themselves to the peak point of life. Therefore, in the eyes of men like you, Miss Huang is the most tempting of prey, Razin said half-jokingly. It's just that. It's just that Miss Wong asked me for help. I wasn't playing around at all. I feel wronged. You really weren't playing around. 
Rosin casually asks. Of course, I immediately raise my fingers in an elf. Think about it. To develop and maintain a relationship, you'll need about two to three hours a day, right? If it's two relationships, it'll take four to five hours. There are seven hours for sleep every night, an hour's nap in the afternoon, nine hours of work, and three meals which add up to an hour. That's already 18 hours, leaving only six hours left in a day. If I were playing around and tried to two time, I wouldn't have the time to play games, watch videos, or read novels. How tiring, how boring. Makes sense. Rosin slowly nods before saying with a smile, Right now, you need a book on time management. Before I can answer, she continues, But how does CEO Huang manage to end time so many women? He's different. If it's just one partner, then he might take one hour out of his two to three day schedule to maintain the relationship. I answer thoughtfully. Rosin tersely acknowledges. That's right. CEO Huang is different from us. He's handsome and rich. Sai. Rosin and I sigh at the same time. Rosin, who's quite the gossip monger, suddenly shrinks back. Old AI is here. I'll be returning to my seat first. Just as Rosin leaves, CEO Wong's person in charge, the corporate office's director AI appears and stops in front of me. He's already old. His hair is completely white, and his face is pale. Send everything you need to claim today to finance. You don't have to receive Mr. Zaratulstra anymore. Old AI says to me as I hurriedly stand up. No way. They're firing me already. I'm going to get a month's severance pay. I'm momentarily stunned. Old AI passes me a document and continues, liaise with the members involved in this project. It's a project the company is working on with the police. Oh, the turn of events is too sudden that I don't know how to respond. Realizing that I don't have to ride with Rasego tomorrow, I have the baffling feeling that it might not be a bad idea. Chapter 1416 and Modern Day 14 After finding the project team and gaining an understanding of the situation, I spend quite a bit of time organizing the information. I also leave the company at 3 in the afternoon, preparing myself to head towards the city's police station to visit the staff in charge. After leaving my company's building, I take out my phone, open my ride-sharing app, and submit my destination. Since it's not the evening rush hour, I get a driver in just a few seconds. He's in the vicinity, one minute. I glance at the notification and am very pleased that I don't need to wait too long. One minute passes quickly. But as I look left and right, I don't see the license plate that I remember. Suspecting that I've misremembered, I hurriedly unlock my phone to confirm the situation. At this moment, I heard the chiming of a bicycle bell. Uh, I subconsciously look up and see a green-orange bicycle. Sitting on the bicycle is a young man wearing a dark baseball cap and a thin black coat. Ring, ring, ring. The bicycle stops in front of me as the man extends his right foot to support the bicycle against the ground. His forehead is wide and his face is thin. His short black hair is slightly curled, and his eyes are darker than an ordinary person's, close to pure black. His biggest characteristic was that, like a cosplayer, he wore a crystal monocle on his right eye. Holding the bicycle's handle with one hand, the man adjusts his monocle with the other. He smiles at me and says, you are the one who requested a ride. I did, but I requested a car, not a bicycle. I opened my mouth, unsure if I should answer. At that moment, I even underwent existential questions. Who I am? Where am I? Where am I going? You're going to the police station, right? The young man with the monocle didn't care that I didn't respond as he asked with a smile. No way. Is there really an option for getting a bicycle? And I selected it somehow. I slowly nod. At this moment, there are only two clear thoughts in my mind. Should I take a photo or video to post on my moments? Should I call the customer service to complain? At that moment, the young man wearing the monocle points to the side of the building and says, Wait another minute, my car is parked there. As he speaks, he takes out his phone and waves it. Huh? I still don't understand what's happening. The young man presses the edge of his monocle and smiles. I did something in the nearby alley just now. I couldn't drive through, and the distance to walk here was a little far, so I rented a shared bike. I'm sorry, please wait a minute or two, since the other party has already said so and I'm not in a rush. I politely reply, it's fine. The young man immediately puts away his phone and rode his bicycle to the side of the building. Soon, a white car drives over and stops in front of me. Alright, you can board it now. The car window rolls down, revealing the face with the monocle. Just as I'm about to open the car door, I suddenly realize a problem. The car displayed on the app is black. Uh, I'm just about to walk to the back to look at the car plate when the driver waves his phone at me across the passenger seat. I have two cars. I'm driving this car today, but I bound my account to the other one. Look, my phone is right. With that, he calls me, seeing that the number displayed isn't a problem, 
and considering how I've encountered similar situations before, I'm relieved. I open the car door and get in. It's broad daylight in a bustling city. What is there to be afraid of? However, the reviewing and verifications undertaken by the platform are really problematic. When I get into the car, the driver with a monocle looks ahead as he picks up a cigarette box and hands it back. Want a cigarette? Isn't smoking banned? I blurt, as long as I don't mind it. The thin driver smiles through the rearview mirror. I don't smoke. I instinctively shake my head. The driver holds the steering wheel with one hand, not really paying attention to the situation on the road. It's good that you don't smoke. I don't smoke either. Smoking causes one to have a ghastly appearance. Then why do you have cigarettes? I follow up quickly. As the car drives down the road, the driver uses his empty hand to touch the monocle on his right eye. There will always be some friends you need to meet despite you being unwilling to meet. That's true. I nod. At this moment, I recall Vice President Wu from the company next door. Although he smokes, his appearance is definitely not ghastly. However, there's no need to say it out loud. I'm not someone who gets into debates with others in a professional manner. You don't look like a rideshare driver. I glance at the obviously expensive cigarettes and glance around the luxurious interior of the car. Hey <laughs> hey, the driver replies with a smile. Is my performance that obvious? You don't look like you make a living from ride-sharing. You look like you come from a rich family. I give a random reason. Either way, I can't tell. Ha <laughs> ha. Being born with a silver spoon doesn't bar me from making a living from ride-sharing. It allows me to experience a completely different life from my past. And being able to see all kinds of unique people is a form of entertainment. Don't you find it interesting? The driver says with a smile. How philosophical. I nod and casually say, that may be the case, but I think you occasionally only take a few ride orders and are usually busy with other things. Yes, I went to your building to investigate. The driver looks at the rearview mirror again, and his smile makes me feel a little strange. Investigate. I'm at a loss. It's about an evil cult. They like to use vending machines to harm others. The corner of the driver's lips curls up. If it wasn't for the fact that I already knew about it, I would have lost my composure. You're a private detective. Do you know a detective named Sherlock Moriarty? This might be his nickname. I suddenly have an idea. The driver raises his hand to pinch the edge of his monocle and chuckles. Of course, we're old friends. I don't know if it's my imagination, but I feel like he emphasized the words old friend. D did you, or any of you find anything? I try my best to act like a bystander. The driver half turns his head to glance at me and says with an obvious smile, Guess. That's such a punchable smile. I rein in my emotions. I guess so. Then it's as you say, the driver says with an expression of I know a lot, but I won't tell you. As I think about what to say, he suddenly straightens his back and looks ahead. Then, he pushes the monocle on his right eye. Suddenly, countless fragments appear in my mind. Overlapping roads, tunnels, mixed colors, different signboards, pedestrians, cars that swept backwards rapidly. They simultaneously explode in my mind at the same time, making me feel like I'm suffering from motion sickness. We're here. The driver's voice enters my ears the next second. I get out of the car in a daze and squat down at the side of the road, feeling like I might vomit at any moment. I recover after a while, but the ride-sharing car has already left. Thinking back, I suddenly shudder. The driver resembled the emoji that the star had mentioned. Uh, chapter 1417 and Modern Day 15 No way. Is the driver related to the monocle incident that the star mentioned? He's been corrupted, or is he the source of corruption? Wait, why did I use the word corruption? At that moment, I feel like my heart stopped beating for two seconds. I forget my stupor as I quickly check my belongings. My phone is still here. My keys are still here. My travel card is still here. My 7 yuan change is still here. My shoes are still here. My pants are still here. My clothes are still here. And my body is still here. Phew. I didn't lose anything. Nothing happened. I heave a sigh of relief. I feel as though I was just overthinking things. People just love to scare themselves. Since I've already taken out my phone, I take a look at the time. 3.25 PM. That driver drove really fast, five to six minutes earlier than the estimated time on the app. No wonder I got motion sickness. I gain a new understanding of the situation. So that's what happened. However, I keep having the feeling as though I wasn't in the car for more than 15 minutes and that we didn't exchange many words. Maybe it was due to the motion sickness I experienced towards the end of my journey, probably. I raise my head, get my bearings, and head for the eye-catching police station. It's a compound with several buildings inside. Two fully armed police officers stand guard at the entrance. At this moment, I suddenly think of a problem. 
I connect it to a question from my prior inspection of my personal belongings. I didn't bring a paper notebook or pen. Of course, this isn't a result of my negligence. It's just that I'm used to using my cell phone to record matters. If it were something grander in scale, or in a more professional setting, I would bring a notebook computer. I haven't used a paper notebook in the last two years. Uh, in a work environment like a police station, the leaders in charge of matters definitely can't stand the situation of someone holding a cell phone and tapping on it during business exchanges. That's not polite at all. When dealing with them, it's better to be more conservative and traditional. Hum, I'll first find a stationary shop, buy a pen, buy a notebook, and then go in. Aha, <laughs> in a business environment, putting on an act is also a skill. I immediately look around to find my target. At times like this, I'll always praise my habit of leaving some buffer time. This gives me enough time to not be in a rush and allows me to be calm. The leader in charge of the project and I agreed to meet at 4 p.m., so I have 35 minutes of spare time. Normally speaking, taking a taxi from the company to this place would take about 20 minutes. With the series of actions like going downstairs, waiting for the ride, and entering the compound, the total time required is about 35 minutes. I set off at 3 p.m., giving myself plenty of buffer time to arrive at the scheduled time of 3.45 p.m. But considering the possibility of traffic jams, registrations, inspections, and unknown accidents, I ultimately scheduled the appointment to be at 4 p.m. To my surprise, the driver with the monocle drove so fast that I arrived ahead of time. I don't find any stationary stores despite looking around. I hurriedly take out my phone and use the map app to search for a nearby store. The nearest stationary store is 2 kilometers away. Get a rideshare to go over. Just as I'm hesitating, I suddenly see a small shop on the opposite side of the road. Star Dream Provision Store. Provision Store. Maybe there's stationary. I'll go take a look first. There's no need to get a rideshare. Heh, Star Dream. It feels like a celebrity management agency. I quickly make up my mind and quicken my pace. Taking advantage of the flashing green light, I cross the pedestrian crossing. Soon, I arrive at the Star Dream Provision Store. The restaurant is very cramped, and the lighting isn't good. It's rather dim inside, giving me the feeling of going from afternoon to evening instantly. Lining both sides of the store are shelves that are about 1.8 meters tall. The items placed on the shelves are dazzling, but they all look rather strange. The cashier is right at the back where a woman in a black dress sits at the back. She has her back against two wooden cabinets and is facing a tablet computer. She's playing with her phone. There's an ancient serial drama playing on the tablet computer, adding a bit of life to the dark shop. However, it's obvious that the cashier is only listening to the sounds with zero concern about the content. This store's design is illogical, and the boss isn't meticulous. If I were a thief, I could take a few items and turn around to leave. She wouldn't be able to discover it at all. I lampoon silently before walking to the cashier and wrap the wooden counter thrice. Hello, do you have a notebook and pen? I'm referring to a paper notebook. The woman in a black dress looks up and replies with a smile. Yes, we do. Over there. Her voice is very gentle, calming me down instantly. Her looks are pretty good. Even the dark environment can't mask her beauty. Without taking another look, I trace the shop owner's finger and look towards the corner of the third rack of the shelf on the right. There is something that appears to be a notebook there, but its design is very strange, as if it's made of brass pages. This is a notebook. I reach for the brass book. It feels cold to the touch, as if it's made of metal. However, there is indeed paper inside. Yes, the shop owner in a black dress says with a calm smile, my shop's theme is mystery. All the products in this area have this characteristic. Product differentiation strategy. This phrase flashes across my mind. At the same time, I survey my surroundings and see an antique quill, a silver mirror with black eyeballs on both sides, and a few dice of different shapes, too many to count. Mirror. I subconsciously pick up the mirror with my other hand. I want to confirm my current condition. I can't look terrible just because of my motion sickness and have it affect the business exchange later. The mirror quickly reflects my face. Black hair, brown eyes, deep facial features, hard lines. Damn, when did I become so handsome? I can't believe that I'm the one in the mirror. After being stunned for two seconds, I quickly put down the brass notebook, take out my phone, and use the screen to examine myself. This is very normal. It's still my original appearance. I turn my head to look at the mirror again. I'm still very handsome in the mirror. What's going on with this mirror? I can't help but ask. The woman in the black dress smiles. This is a smart mirror. Oh, I understand. I suddenly understand. 
It's a smart mirror with its own beautifying features, filters, and Photoshop effects. To put it simply, it's actually a special tablet that's directly connected to TikTok and beauty cam apps. With this in mind, I lose interest and immediately place the mirror back in its original position. For some reason, I feel like the mirror is a little sticky. I use a lot of strength to retract my hand. How much is this notebook? And this quill? I don't waste any time. I pick up the brass notebook again and ask for the price. The boss in a black dress purses her lips and chuckles. 10 million. PFFT. I almost spit on her face. The two of these are antiques, the boss added. Is there anything that isn't an antique? Something more normal. I take a deep breath and ask directly. Yes. The woman in the black dress points behind me. I turn around and see a black, ordinary notebook. I pick it up and flip through it. I'm certain that the surface of the notebook is made of hard paper. The paper inside is an imitation of goatskin. One of the pages is painted with the fool, who's wearing gorgeous clothes and dazzling head accessories. But the fool is my online nickname. How can I not recognize the fool? How much is it? I ask casually. 30 yuan. The boss replies with a good attitude. It's a little expensive. What about this pen? I casually pick up another dark red, classic fountain pen. 25 yuan. If you buy both of them, you can have them for 50 yuan, the boss in the black dress says with a smile. I hesitate for a few seconds and feel that 50 yuan isn't an unacceptable price compared to traveling 2 kilometers by taxi. Not only is it a waste of time, but the transport cost would be around 20 yuan. Including the cost of the notebook and pen, it would be about 30 to 40 yuan. Okay, I take out my phone and complete the transaction. After leaving the Star Dream Provision Store and returning to the police station, I register at the guard house. During this process, a police car drives out. Is there an emergency mission? The policeman on duty asks. While waiting for the barrier to rise, the driver replies indifferently. Damn it, a car thief appeared. He stole two sedan cars. 